Yeah. All right, well, let's get started. Um, call the meeting to order. It is three minutes past the hour and all sitting directors are present. Um, and we have, we have a nice list of guests too. Um, I think the only guest that was going to be here who isn't is Matt Jones. Anyway, um, the first item on the agenda is the minutes. And I do need to apologize. I did not publish the minutes until yesterday. Um, as I was preparing for the meeting, I realized that we never did publish the minutes last month. And so that has been, that has been taken care of. The minutes were published yesterday. Um, I believe that we published the video of the meeting like a day or two after the meeting. So that is all that is all live and out there. And uh, with that, I'll move on to the exciting part of the meeting. Um, we have been conducting over the last eight days an election for replacement seats of the board of directors. And uh, I, I, I would honestly have been thrilled by any two that were selected. Um, but it's my great pleasure to announce that the two new directors are Amy Merritt and Celeste Lynn Paul. Um, Amy is here, Celeste is not. Um, Amy, you are welcome to uh, participate as a director in the meeting effective immediately and uh, participate in any, any discussion during this meeting with a binding vote. Sounds good. <clears throat> The, uh, the next item of business is the appointment of officers. Um, I have been serving as chair for the last six or eight months um, in the absence of our chair. And, you know, I, I, I would be content to continue to do that um, going forward if that is the desire of the directors, but uh, I would recommend that the, the board does select a chair and a secretary. Um, Tomas, uh, if, if you are content to continue to serve as secretary, um, I, sorry about I'm that. happy to continue or to help with chairing if someone else wants to step in to do secretary for a change because I'm not, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we can certainly sort out after the meeting if people, yeah, uh, it's not something we necessarily not, have to resolve now. Yeah, because maybe if, if someone really wants to do it or we can talk uh, over the mailing list maybe and see uh, if, uh, especially if uh, the newcomers are, have some will to do it, maybe it's good as well. So let's uh, let's uh, bounce an email when the, the new director have been added to the mailing list. And I will take care of sending out um, formal welcomes and invitations in particular to Celeste who is not joined us here today. Um, I wanna thank all the other people who were willing to stand for, for the director's role. Um, they're not all here, but many of them are. Thank you so much for being willing and thank you for participating in that, in that process. Let's see. If there is no further discussion on those topics, um, I'd like to move forward to the, uh, to the open issues. And uh, I am not aware of any progress on any of these issues since our last meeting, which is hardly unexpected since many of us were off for a large portion of that time. Um, but uh, going through the open issues, we have uh, an issue regarding the brand work, uh, specifically adopting a new typeface, the Montserrat typeface, on the, uh, the logos and other branding. And I don't think, and unless somebody knows differently, I don't think that there has been any motion on that since our last meeting. Not hearing anything, so. Uh, I, I have a question um is yes. that intentionally done to align with fedora 
standards or is that coincidental or um you know i'm not sure i think that it's coincidental but uh um yeah. I, I don't think that that question i'm not aware of that question yeah. right. being raised okay the, it, it, it it might be good to be aware problem? of it is not i don't think so but it, it is not our logo font but it is the font that is our standard font for headlines um in most of our things so um it will look fedora e to fedora people at least Okay. Um, which I don't think is bad. I'm here for the agenda of more cooperation between CentOS and Fedora, but um, I think we shouldn't do that by accident. I guess that's the. Uh. Well, we brought Marion on board and, and she helped design the logo. So yeah. she loves that font, is also part of the connection here. So, all right, that's cool. I mean, it's a nice looking font. All right, yeah, if Mo is involved, I'm not, not worried. Yeah, she has been involved with the discussion for the last, I'd say, three months, maybe longer. <clears throat> and thanks. The, the next issue here is uh, regarding trusting SIGs by default. And I see that a note has been added that a detailed proposal, oh, to be sent. Do we have somebody who has taken that as an action? I think it was yes. O'Neill, wasn't it? From last minute? Or... I believe yes, so it who was. Said yes? I, I, I've also been working on some of this uh, on the Red Hat side specifically because um, this has to do with other things that we're working on related to Secure Boot. So uh, I'm trying to get um, uh, a few answers out of the uh, like what's technically possible with what we have already. So this is still partly on my plate too. Yeah, I, I think it would be useful to know from a CPA standpoint what we can actually do versus what we can't do. And then we can build a proposal around that because if there are options that are just not available period, there isn't much point in pontificating on them. I was not expecting too much uh, because of the holidays and everything. So yeah. I think we should bump this one to to next meeting anyway. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I would very much like to see something that we can report at that point. Yeah, I'll take that as a um, I'll take that as the assignment for next meeting. All right. So Thomas has noted an action on that for next meeting. Um, the next item is one that we've been kicking down the road for, for at least three meetings now. Um, and in the minutes from last time, I believe that this was an action to Davida, um, if I'm correct. I am happy uh, to publish this if someone tells me where to. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I think, think that, that was, was the conclusion from the that last time. Continued to be the question as to where this would be, and I, I think that maybe we just need to pick something. And uh, I think that the uh, the SIG guide yeah. was the thing that most people were in agreement on. So let's go ahead and publish it in the SIG guide. Okay. And uh, you know we can always move and cross link later if if desired sounds good I'm, I'm happy to take an action for that um they they just moved where yeah, that's right i forgot the that. mechanism of how the sig guide is is being done uh fabian has the details fabian has the details of where and how we publish that now and i don't recall exactly where that is but we well, it's can on ask not us, but I don't yep. know what the contribution process is. Right, I, I don't recall that either. But it's 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 new, and uh, and there is a process, and Fabian knows how to make that happen, so we can get in contact with him and figure it out. Yeah, I believe there's a Git repo. Oh, uh, Brian just dumped it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make sure to find Makes out sense. how it works, yep. and I'll send an email as well to remind people because this is an important oh. guide. Um, yeah. <clears throat> issue number 44 
Next on the agenda is regarding permissions for past directors. And <laughs> this was raised when the last directors departed six months ago. So um, this is something else that we've been kicking down the road for quite a while. Um, I, I, I feel like we've resolved this, you know, we, we, uh, we, we've got the mailing lists um, and then we've got various permissions, but I think this is also something that we asked CPE to look into as to where directors do have access. And I, I think that's probably on me for not following up on that. I don't know that I ever, I mean, Brian was in the meeting and, and so I, I, I think I assumed, but I never followed up with an yeah, actual okay. action item there. Uh, I, I've got a suggestion here um, because I think the I, I would suggest that the board move to close number forty four here because the um, and then in the course of you know future elections or or replacements of directors um, the infrasig would appreciate uh, a ticket whenever a board member is is departing that way we can figure out whatever uh, machine access has been given out as part of that. Um, Okay. Uh, as part of those responsibilities and we're the the infrasig would like we intend to uh clean up the existing machine accesses that are that were granted as part of board member responsibilities for folks who have already departed so all right i will i will take an action there to, to open a ticket for each departing director back as far as ralph i guess um ralph was our our first exit just and, as a uh, reminder, there's a few, few few accesses to be checked for, like, um, for example, Jim and Karambir that are mailing links creation access. So this is why I didn't close it this time, because I think that has not been done yet. This is like spe specific access that should not ever be changed in the future, but need to be changed once. So this is why I kept this one open. And uh, yeah, uh, I think as soon as we resolve that, we, we can close it. And I have a feeling that as we onboard people like myself, we'll have a reverse engineering of what needs to be added, therefore what needs to be removed. That's right. So everybody's happy with the solution of Brian uh, to, to open a ticket when we have new uh, and, and to, when we remove a member. Yeah, okay, yeah. so perfect. Do, do we have a... Sorry, a list of, of these um, different access items. I, I mean, the only thing I see no, is that's the, that's what we're missing. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a pretty good start in the um, in the top of the issue, not fleshed out. Um, yeah, and uh, I don't I don't see those in the. Um, In the onboarding place. Uh, no, the onboarding so, is uh, not a thing yet. There's a <laughs> file, but there's nothing in it. Okay. Um, and and what we wanted to do is is ask CPE to, to to audit and look for where these former directors and I guess there's five or six of them at this point. And, yes. Uh, so I'll so open think... a ticket for each one of those. The, okay. the the one thing that we're concerned about from an inf infrastructure perspective is um, like previously a seat on the board granted you access to every machine in the infrastructure. Um, and that's not necessarily the case unless you're part of the infrasig as well, uh, you know, starting from uh, from when we started up the infrasig. And so that's the sort of access that we want to be sure that we clean up for folks. Um, so if you're a director and you join the infrasig and you continue participating past your term, uh, you know, we don't we don't want to cut your cut off your access as, as part of that, but we do want to be sure that we keep those things up to date so that um, you know folks aren't a, had, folks don't have their SSH keys on our machines for far longer than we expect them to. And of course, we need Amy and Celeste added to the board private mailing list, and I must admit, I don't actually know how to do that. So. Uh, it's hosted on Mailman. Um, I 
think Karen Bear is actually the official admin for that. Uh, I have access to be too. able to do that as well. Yeah, Ralph and Johnny and and KB and I think Jim as well. If if so you guys three yeah, and, and, directors. Right. And if you guys uh if you guys send me the info, I can get it in there. Okay. I'll get um, you their email addresses. Yeah, basically all we need is the email address and the name they want to use on the, the list and I can get it in there. But to me, just a comment here, if we want to do this uh, ticket to infra, maybe it would make sense that the infra is managing this mailing list as well, this mailing list access. So Well, F Fabian also has access to the list. So yeah, okay. Fabian and I and Jim, True, uh, Ralph all have access. And we can get... We can obviously we need to take KB and Jim off since they're no longer members, um, and we can decide on the other people. And Ralph can come off; he's no longer a member. We can decide on the other people. None of those guys log in. I mean, I can see who logs in and who doesn't, right? So, but yeah, we can we can get that changed. And Fabian has access to all that as well. So the Infra team does have access. Okay, so Johnny, could you um, at least add the new director if you have access? Yes, I I, I can do that. If if uh, Rich gets me the info, I'll get him in, and and I can get uh, if we vote, I can take uh, Ralph and KB out of, of login permissions as well. Although they're owners, but they log in. There's a there's an admin login and password as well, right? That's different from the individual logs in logins and passwords. But I can remove them as listed as owners of the the process. Mm -hmm. So I can update that or we can get it updated and I can get these people in the list. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, echoing uh, Tomas there, if we, that is, uh, if we can hand that list off to Infra so that as part of the ticket opening process, they just do that, that would be. I mean, we can do that as well. They have access. So it's mm -hmm. not, I mean, I'm, I'm right. also on the, in the CPE, I'm not. I'm not on the infra team, but I'm in CPE. So, all right, I will get you their preferred email addresses um, as soon as I can. <clears throat> we we have three issues that are kind of permanently on hold here. Um, We've got two regarding cloud images, and that's something that CPE continues to work on. Um, I have not heard any any updates on that, but uh, I know that they they do continue to work on that. Um, and then we've got this one regarding the logo. And every month I ping legal and I say, "Hey, do you all have any thoughts on uh, registering the logo?" And they're like, "Yeah, sorry, we dropped that." And then. I don't hear from them until the next month. So I, I have gone through that dance again this month and, and will continue to, uh, to do that going forward. This is relatable content right here. Yeah. <laughs> it took you, what, two years? Uh, there's, there's stuff going on still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. Um, the, the final item on the agenda is the community architect updates. And I have several of these. Uh, the first of them is that we hope to publish the schedule for the upcoming dojo in the next couple of days. Uh, we did have a flood of new, of new topic submissions in the last two days that the, the call for presentations was open as, as usual. So we will be running two days of content, um, but right now we're in the process of contacting those proposed speakers and ensuring that they are still willing to present. Uh, on that front, did I remember to submit a proposal? For yeah, Star? you're on the list. Okay. That's I haven't started writing it yet, and I'm like, wait a minute, did I? And it's pretty close. It's only two weeks out, so need to need to get that moving. Yeah, that's basically tomorrow's plan. Uh, the next item, I just wanted to update you all that we did, in fact, um, 
declare CentOS Linux 8 end of life. And uh, there were some articles in the press around that. Um, and as anticipated, there was a flurry of, of vitriol on social media, but it died down very quickly. And, uh, you know, no, no blood was spilled. Um, so we are moving along with life following that. On IRC, someone, and I'm not sure who it was, but someone created a new channel called EL Community, um, which has participation from the CentOS project, Alma Linux project, Rocky, and some folks from RHEL. And uh, it's a place for cross-distribution discussion on all of these distributions. And uh, it seems very friendly so far. I don't know that it's been productive. I don't know that anything actionable has come out of it, but it's been very friendly so far. And uh, so I wanted to let you all be aware of that. Those of you that do IRC might be, might be interested in dropping in there. And then the, the final item on my list here, I mentioned last month in executive session that I will be stepping down from the community manager position um, over the next few weeks. Sean McCants, who is in the meeting today, will be stepping into that role. And uh, I'm mentioning it now so that it's in the minutes. I will be mentioning it on our public mailing lists in the coming days so that it's not a huge surprise to people. Um, Sean has been around open source at least as long as I have. He has extensive experience in the GNOME community, among others. And uh, I think he's going to do a, a great job with this role. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm just stepping into a different position within the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. So I'll be around for a consultation if anything comes up that I did not hand off very effectively. And I'm sure there are many of those things. So uh, I think that most people here were already aware of that. I just wanted to get it into the minutes and into the public record. We will miss you, Rich, but we will be excited to have Sean. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rich. It was really great to work with you and all the work you've been doing for the community and for us. Thanks. Thank you. And with yeah, that, we you. are done a really incredible job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I, I want to echo that, Rich, before you keep talking. You did an <laughs> out, outstanding job. I'm done. Thanks. I concur. I want to thank Rich, and I also want to apologize for bearing the brunt of everything that went on the last year. And uh, <laughs> he did a stand-up job, and uh, 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 really thank you. Yeah, you will definitely be missed, Rich. Appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to time this such that Sean did not bear any of that, but I'm sure that he will continue to bear some of that in the coming year. Um, we still have community members that are not aware that CentOS Linux has gone end of life. I had a conversation with one of them on Twitter today that was a complete surprise to them. And uh, that will continue, I am sure, um, with the RHEL 9 release and with the end of life of CentOS Linux 7 and on and on and on as people find out about this. So, Well, they'll know in a two weeks when the, the address stops working. Some of them will, yes. Those of them that are rationally applying their security updates on a regular interval. I'm waiting for a You're lot of CI funny. pipelines to break in a month. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm uh, strongly encouraging updates on by default for stream nine. I am encouraging updates on by default just anywhere, if you can. I've, that's been my practice for almost 20 years now, and it's been it's broken my systems maybe a handful of times in 20 years, but I've been security patched generally instantly. Um, we do have reports from 
four or five of our SIGs this month, and I encourage you to read those in the newsletter draft. That newsletter will go out on Tuesday um, if you want to wait until then. But uh, I believe that all of the requested SIGs got their reports in on time, which I greatly appreciate. And uh, I, looking through those reports, I don't see anything that was requested to be brought to the board's attention. And so there's, there's no action there other than to read those reports and inform yourselves. Yeah. Uh, on that front, uh, since we have the board members now elected, uh, if we could update the last paragraph to indicate uh, that we yes. haven't left. Yeah, I, I will do that before I send it out. Thank you for that reminder. Is there any other business that people wish to raise at this time? Uh, do we have a sense as to how the Stream 9 work is going in terms of community involvement and all of those things? As I've seen a handful of poll requests come in, but both are from people who are in this meeting. So I have one specific comment regarding that, and that is that a number of people have raised to my attention that a lot of our phrasing around stream um, talks about the community's contributions and then leaves our rel engineers out of that. And I wanna just make a call to all of us to, to be very vocal and welcoming the, uh, the rel engineering team, acknowledging them as part of the community so that it's not those guys and the community. Um, other than that, I've, I've seen a, a, a few merge requests um, successfully make it through the process from outside of Red Hat, but also many, many, many of them from within Red Hat. And uh, it is something that I have encouraged and adjured Sean to look into in the coming year to be very conscious about trying to get the RHEL engineers to participate in the community in a public way um, and, and that being sort of a focus of his, of his uh, first few months here. So that kind of answers the question I was going to do. Are the REL members not feeling part of the community? And if so, maybe during the dojo, this one or next one, maybe we have a social or something, just an introduction so people meet each other. I mean, it sucks that it's virtual, but it might be a good idea just so they feel like they're part of the community and welcomed. I don't, I don't know that I've heard anything along those lines. Um, I can ask around, uh, but I think the rail engineers are, many of them are well-versed in community interactions through Fedora. And so uh, I, don't, I don't know that anybody feels jilted, but I do appreciate uh, Rich's, Rich's perspective there because it is interesting. We, like, we, don't, we don't tend to like, we say community and often we mean non-Red Hat and that's yeah. not the case, right? So. Um, on the other side of things, like I actually think our contributions to stream are going very well. And it's not, it's not that we're getting, you know, 8,000 merge requests from Neil, uh, who is amazing and doing good work. Um, it is even beyond just merge requests. Uh, we're getting bug reports. We're getting uh, requests for packages to be added to, uh, CRB and things along those lines. Um, I really think if we can continue to encourage any kind of contribution, it's going to benefit us. What can we do to report on that more loudly? It's a good question. Um, and again, that's not a question we need to answer now, but it's a question I'd like to see answered over the coming quarter. Yeah, I, I think it's going to take uh, Brian and I to put our heads together a little bit and see how easily we can get metrics for it. Um, and then figure out how to highlight things. Uh, and just to be transparent, I, he and I have talked about internally when we, when we do a contribution through normal rel development to stream and we add a feature or we add a package or something, reinforcing and encouraging our product teams to you know, send an email to the list and say, hey, there's this new feature and it's here now and you can use it. That kind of uh, rolling thunder approach is, is really gonna be good. Would it be the, worth uh, building a effectively a bugzilla report that is just things that were reported against stream that were fixed in the last week, month, year, unit? Could. Could, yeah. 
Yeah, I think there's some, there, there's some reporting that we could do. I think that um, it always gets interesting with, uh, with running things through the, the rel process and where it gets, um, you know, where things land in, in testing or, you know, if, if other things come up as part of a patch or, or something like that. Um, it's hard to metricize that, but we could at least look at a report that, that would give you some of that some of that data. Yeah, I, I think both aggregate metrics in terms of these many merge requests or these many bug reports and all that, but also specifics of these non-trivial thing that fixed or landed. I think both will be very useful, both for folks to contribute and for folks in the community that actually use CentOS in production and wanna keep up to date on what's going on without necessarily being super involved and like tracking what's going on in GitLab every day. And on the, um... On the community contributions and and um, you know sentiment in general, uh, I think the you know another thing that we we should look at too is the success that Apple Nine had because we are uh, a whole lot more closely uh, related as projects now. Um, they're they're basically killing it in terms of uh, you know getting things ready on a uh, uh, you know a whole lot faster than we did for eight uh because we were able to to give them a base to build on so that's that's a we have to be deal. very careful by using the phrase killing it mm -hmm. they are performing well they are not <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right that was a bad phrasing i'm i'm sorry about that i can say anecdotally almost all of my apple packages that i need for my daily life exist today for apple line cool. yeah and i've seen some good synergy with package requests for packages in Apple 9, trigger requests for things to be added to CRB that end up benefiting CentOS 9 and so on. So it's been working quite nicely there. Did we want to put a standing item on the uh, agenda until RHEL 9 comes out to talk about how we feel Streams 9 is going? Just to keep touching base with our uh, both our our community that wears red hats and our community that doesn't. Sure, and I think that 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 probably goes into the community architect update section. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anything we can do to make the uh, actual engineers feel more comfortable emailing the DBL list will definitely. Uh, make my life easier. And because I, I think these days I know like a third of them and they're all great people. Well, I have noticed that we have more of that than we had in the past already, right in the dev yeah. list. Um, we, we, have, we have lots of feedback from rail engineers that are on the list. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, the updates on glibc have just warmed my heart and made me so happy because <laughs> these were questions that I was going to have in three months and the answers were just given to me. And that was just amazing. One thing we do want to talk to, the, one thing we do want to make sure that the uh, SIGs understand and they should because of the list is that rel 8 is going to be available to build against for sigs uh after january so if there are sigs out there that want to continue to build 8 dot whatever content for for rel um they will be able to build against a, a version of rel that'll be available uh when centos linux disappears off of all the mirrors so, but they have to opt in if 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 the sig doesn't opt in to build 8.x stuff then the content that's already there is going to go away when we take that directory and we shift it all over and the only thing that'll continue to get into the 8 directory will be items that are going forth and being built so that that's something to talk to the sigs about if anybody uh, is involved in that. W would we advocate for them to switch to using um, CentOS Stream 8 as a build target? 
that's already there. All of the SIGs are doing CentOS Stream 8. But for the ones that wanted to continue to use, to do a downstream type build for oh, okay. the SIG content, right? So, so there are SIGs yeah. that do both. And the ones that want to continue to do downstream will have to opt in to do that. And anything that doesn't get opted in that was already out there that was older and being built on CentOS Linux 8 is going to disappear, right? So then only the new opt-in content for downstream stuff will continue to to work and, and and the SIGs just need to understand that that's going to happen some of the stuff's going to disappear it'll be in vault right it'll still be in the archive and everything but but only going forward only new stuff built against rel will be continuing to get pushed to the current location and everything else will disappear so Okay, I, I tried to catch all the ID and I added a point for you, Johnny. Please reread the, the minutes to see if it catches uh, every ID. Uh, I think I did, but in case I forgot someone, let me know. Do we have any other topics that anyone wishes to raise? I just want to make sure the CPE people are building cloud ops and we should decide what we do with uh, uh, the AWS uh, images. Can we bring that down the page and redirect it to the wiki page for cloud.centers.org? Uh, he's talking about issue number 72 in the on the board list yeah is the uh, cloud ops email address getting directed to somebody who's reading it i'll look I, into I that from the other side um sorry what is that email address for for my understanding uh, it's the contact email for uh, our Amazon images and our, uh, I think, our Google images as well for the actual like marketplace to reach out and say, hey, there's something weird with your image. Oh, I see. We should probably plan on Azure being added to that as well based on, I believe it is issue three. I would bet it goes to Fabian or Johnny since everything else does. I, I definitely get those emails, right? <laughs> but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that uh, I mean I mean that that doesn't mean that other people aren't getting it because the all of the all of the email lists are aliases, right? And uh, right in these things. So um, I would have to look at the file to see who gets what, right? To see the thing. And that's a CPE. It's a CPE action to update that and, and put people on the list when, when names are given. That would be given through a ticket uh, to get, you know, people so, on that list. So yeah, that list does should, exist. We, we, we right, do well, need to update that list. So I'll, I'll, I'll take an action to, to look at that. Right now it goes true. It looks like it goes to you, KB, and Jim. On the me left. Yeah. All right. Last call. Any other topics that people? I'm sorry, you were speaking true. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we will update the page on AWS and those images. Because it's, I think the images haven't been updated for quite a long time, and just now we direct people to the cloud .org page now. And I don't know what the I don't know what the procedure is or, or what the goal is, but I think HStream is going to replace eight uh, after everything moves off, right? I don't, I don't think we're going to leave an old image of eight that doesn't have 
that no longer gets updates out there, but that's not something that I can sp speak to as, uh, you know, a, a decision that's been completely made yet. Uh, I, because I don't, I don't know the decision, but I, I I'm assuming that that's going to be the case that we're not going to continue to push old images and that eight stream and nine stream are going to be the images that, that, that show up after the EOL is complete at the end of this month. Um, Certainly, we don't want to have old images out there. I would think. Yeah, I definitely agree. We should not keep unsupported images around. Yeah, that was my assumption of what was going to happen. It's just somebody. We still have the CentOS 6 images on the Docker Hub. Yeah, we probably, we probably need to make all of that old stuff go away. go away i would think yeah. yeah not sure if they'll let you get rid of it uh, i was able to successfully retire the sl6 uh, base image okay but that was from the official image repo not the like private my personal scientific repo right yeah we wouldn't we we won't be able to make things that other people copied off go away but we can get the official stuff i think gone so I asked about this uh, to a bunch of folks and hearing the language that's being used on this call, as far as I know, there is no decision. Um, Red Hat has an opinion, should we choose to make a decision? But right now, no decision, as far as I know, has actually been made. Um, and the default was that a bunch of people looked and saw that the CL6 images were still out there despite not receiving updates and with no notice of not being updated for individuals who chose to consume them. Um, and that, that was what prompted me to begin asking questions. So the board may wish to take this up as an action item, but I, I wanted to draw that out because the language here was making a lot of, I assume, I assume, I assume. And so I wanted to say, I don't think there's anything to assume here. And Does anybody I, I, object? to removing these old unsupported images? No, but I'm curious what Bex's uh, official Red Hat opinion is. He didn't say. Were we to have a vote, I would vote in the affirmative to have the old unsupported images removed because I believe it creates a lot of risk for the project and Red Hat does not believe that that is risk the project should bear. And there is a lot of risk from the machine gun that is being fired by whomever is typing. Um, so that, that's Red Hat's kind of official opinion. I don't know the process by which that is removed, but I have complete faith in the folks who are part of our infrastructure SIG and the CPE, Tim, uh, for any members who are not also part of that SIG to be able to accomplish this. Yeah, I would well, very that, much like that was my company. question. Who can accomplish this and who should I assign this action item to? Because um, we have a, a history of saying someone should and then talking about it next month. The question, who has access to the AWS accounts? And I'm, I'm sure I don't have it, so. Yeah, so the CPE infra team pushes the images, right? The, 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 uh, the, the, the nine images right now are getting auto-built and, and there's a process. So Brian can probably talk to how we can get that changed, I would think. I'd also just, you know, before we go too far down this rabbit hole, <clears throat> I would be concerned about the idea of ripping out um, images or references or resources uh, that already exist on the internet like that, especially in light of in light of what's been happening um, in other places. Like, I get that there's, you know, the the whole risk and like people shouldn't be using unsupported old images and whatever but like it's a no-win situation which way you choose and honestly the 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 less painful one is to leave them alone and let them be broken different like the repos are gone so they'll be broken on updates and processes and stuff like that but like deleting the images and removing the references from all the different public cloud places aside from possibly being impossible to do across the board, I think adds a whole new dimension of PR nightmares that I don't actually want to deal with from- I think what we would do here though is just remove 
the official images we publish. And then if someone else has copies of them, as I'm sure they do, that's going to be fine. Uh, and they can keep doing whatever they want with those. But uh, I think for cloud, for cloud in particular, it's not great to have, like, I can one click spin up a box with CentOS 6 or whatever. That's going to be completely and utterly broken, but yeah. maybe uh, I won't uh, notice it. I, I'll go in the direction of Neil to be careful on the communication because, for example, we have some use case for data preservation where we continue to use old image even if we know they are not in use. So there may be other people in this condition. So I would do it, but I would be clear when we remove them to announce it through CentOS Devel and everything. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I agree that we there, there's some edge use cases, and if we remove it, it can be painful to people, even if uh, it's old and everything. So this is why I, I think it makes sense to, to be clear uh, to the community first that we will remove them. And it's not because of a conspiracy or anything. It's just because we believe that uh, it we don't want to maintain official image, but they are really free to copy it somewhere else on the AWS market to keep them if they want. Right. Well, so like, I, for example, on the AWS side, if I remember correctly, we have an AWS marketplace gate thingy that is used for the CentOS images. Disabling those would allow people, would not allow new access to those images, but the existing access would be permitted. So if somebody's already pulled them and somebody's already subscribed to them for lack of a better phrase, um, then they'll continue to have them, but new people wouldn't be allowed to subscribe and get access. Um, if that is a option across the different official image platforms, that is by far the preference I wish we would go because then um, it is a hundred percent less damaging. Um, so, but I think this. So this um, this sounds like the uh, this sounds like two things to me. Um, the like those of us in the infrastructure are going to need to go out and and sort of get an idea of our options for each of the. Um, the, the providers that are out there, because I, I know there's gonna be something, uh, it, it, there might be some implications if we decide to go out and remove old Docker images, for example, because we're in the official image registry or, or the official image um, uh, spot uh, up there. Um, the other thing, uh, I think if, we're, if we are talking about images in the marketplace account specifically, uh, and true, I'm not sure what what that email says uh, necessarily, but if it's about the marketplace specifically, I may work with you to see if we can, um, you know, maybe talk with KB about getting some access to that account because I, if I remember right, that was the last. Um, uh, he, he was the one that had access into the the marketplace side of the operations, and so maybe you and I can work together on that uh, to see what what that looks like. Yeah, and it's not just the marketplace, it's also the community AMIs, which are out there. So I, I honestly, I think, and I'm, I'm sorry to butt in, but I just think it would be smart to take the approach of number one, doing the background research first on what pulling a certain image down from all the different places is actually going to cause, especially to people that are already running things. And then a smart thing to do might be to ask on CentOS Devel and see, or, or, you know, maybe just CentOS list and ask people, you know, what they think about doing this because of, you know, first and foremost, the security issues of having a, you know, four or five year old release available up there in public for people to deploy, which basically, you know, opens you up instantly to a security vulnerability and just see, you know, it, try try to like tease out from people what those edge cases are to figure out um, uh, how to handle that. I think that that'll minimize the backblow and kind of get rid of the conspiracy theorists. Well, I can post uh, if we decide. I can post a list or post an email to the CentOS Devel list that discusses what to do what uh, discusses that issue, right? It says that on all the cloud-based. Yeah, retiring old cloud images, yeah. Yes, as a, I think part, it's of, like, yep. as a part of doing that. Frozen up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
I thought Johnny had stopped speaking. I didn't realize he had frozen. So if I've cut he you off, Johnny, frozen. I'm sorry. Um, uh, he, he looks nothing like those princesses from Disney. Um, <laughs> the, the thing that I would ask is, as a part of the due diligence work, if we ask the CP team and the infrastructure SIG to report back on that, I would like to see us update the image descriptions to at least state to humans who choose to read, which we know is a depressingly yeah. small percentage of society. Um, this image contains no support from, you know, no updates and any form of support or any other S word you choose to imagine exists from the project. And it is a frozen in time snapshot and you don't really wanna go back here. Um, we can choose better language. But yeah, I think that it, it, at a minimum, it is deprecated or whatever. Yeah, at a minimum, getting that kind of a message out, you know, ASAP, if the board is in agreement on that, would I think be a huge step forward to the idea that no matter what we do, we're going to get blowback. Well, we started doing the right thing. Like we told you when you clicked the button. It's not different when we retire images and move them to vault, is yeah. it? Yeah, it's, we, we definitely need to get it at least harder to load images that are not getting security updates of any kind. I mean, I, I know that that's going to frustrate and annoy a lot of people, but we don't want exploits at scale of our product. Um, and, it, and it's not a huge deal for things that are that continue to get updates because you can just run an update after you deploy it, right? So it, it doesn't matter if it's a couple months behind if, if, if there's also updates available, but when those disappear, that becomes a problem. Yeah. I don't think it's safe to allow people to have a, an operating system that can be remotely compromised without having them, without them to having the time to update or fix it. Yeah, my main concern is that with cloud stuff, it's way too easy to type a Terraform config and end up spinning up a thousand, send six images where you went send seven, and then you instantly have a botnet. I, I think we have lots of ideas on plans and maybe we can take further discussion to the mailing list about what exactly to do. But right now we're blocked on access because KB is the only one who can do anything. So whatever we suggest, we can't do at the moment. Um, and Brian and Bex, do you want to do you want to try to reach out to KB again and see if you can get the access you need? Yeah, I think that's the the next thing that uh, that I'm going to take from this. And and true, I might include you with with some context on the the email that you got uh, to the cloud ops mailer. Yeah, I'm happy to provide backup to the two of you if you need it. Uh, just let me know. Um, also, I would appreciate if if. Brian, you and the Infrasig or CPE could spend a little bit of time to verify this. I was under the impression that the eight images were published via a different account than the seven images. So we may actually have access to some images, but not others. Yes, I can, uh, I can actually verify that that is true right now. Um, we publish the eight, eight stream and nine stream images using a different procedure than Marketplace. Marketplace is the one that we need uh, some level of access it, into in order to update the script, the description like you, uh, you mentioned before. All right, we are coming to the end of the hour. I have one request for the directors that are present. If you'd look at the, uh, the minutes that have been taken, and if there are any items in the minutes, particularly in this last topic that we don't wish to publish publicly, Please indicate that in the minutes, um, in, in a uh, in a way that I can interpret before I publish these. Um, we will be publishing a video, but but honestly, nobody watches it, so I'm, I'm less concerned about that. Wow. Well, they won't get to see we my will be publishing images, but there. honestly, nobody uses them, so we're not concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't see anything That's that cool. would need to be private. I mean, all this information needs to be out there as soon as possible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And we're just arguing about good. wording. Um, last call. Any other topics that we need to address in this meeting? It's the longest meeting we've had in months. Does that mean we're productive or not? I think this was a productive meeting. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I'll just put out a request that now that we have brought on two additional board members and we are preparing to have a community management change, I think it would be worth having the board discuss whether this meeting should change times. Um, I don't know if this is the best time for the majority of the members, and I know that it is certainly skewed late for several of us. Um, and I would love to see that fixed if I'm not in the minority on that. I'd happily submit to a poll to see what works best. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll poll when we have uh, the new director added to the mailing list. Let me know and I'll send a poll for a few new time slots, trying to take That's in consideration right. all time zones. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I move to adjourn. Second. And just it's a final hearing... thank you, Rich, for everything. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, Rich. You've made this a much better experience overall. You've done a great job and we'll miss you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, follow, I followed you from RDO to, to Cento. And it was <laughs> so really uh, super nice. Uh, <laughs> nice, uh, nice. Uh, I was telling him. Rich earlier today that, that, that I followed Rich here from, from RDO as well. Oh, well, why don't you come <laughs> back to RDO? I disappointed <laughs> a bunch of times, but maybe it is better now. We have swag. We're fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Cookies. Maybe back to swear <laughs> i don't know i heard rdo was sitting on the centos board now so you you could stay here <laughs> we are adjourned thank you thank you everyone for attending and i will uh, send out notifications to our new directors momentarily thank you thank Thanks, you everyone. bye bye